Okay, um, before we go to question and answer, I just wanted to give a shameless plug for the China Sourcing Academy that I'm working on. And we have courses that are like 32 hours of this type of material. So you can find a lot of information there. Um, and now, um, before we go to question and answer, since this is my last seminar of the, of the fifth one that we've done in the in I still have a little bit of voice left. I'm happy to answer question and answer. Please make me look good, but most importantly, after all of this talking that I've done over six hours in the last three days, if you only take away two things. One, if it's a new product, new supplier, you're new, manage your expectations. There's gonna be a lot of hand-holding to get things right the first time. Are you gonna find an agent? Are you gonna do it yourself? Those are all, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with doing it yourself, but if you've got a day job or you don't have time to spend a couple hours a day to manage the process, um, you know, it can put you out of business from day one. So have an idea for how much money and time it's going to take to do things right. And as I think it's the seventh time I've said it in the past few days, but I'm going to repeat myself because it's worth saying. Make sure that the name on the contract, the bank account, business license, and ideally the factory date is the same name in local language. It's happened to me. I placed a big order. I don't think the supplier was trying to trick me, but I placed the purchase order with a factory in China. I sent the money to their uh, bank account, which was their, their trading arm in Hong Kong. I had to take them to court for an infraction. And the judge says, okay, Mike, show me where you put the money. Here's where I sent the money. Show me the contract to that company. Oh, I don't have a contract with the Hong Kong company. I have a contract with the manufacturer. Drag the manufacturer in. Oh, yeah, we have a contract with Mike, but we never received those monies to our bank account, so we didn't start the order. My hands are tied because I can't link that payment and contracts went to the same place. Long story short, a scam artist, will you'll flush them out, and also you will protect yourself with a real factory when the, the name on the contract, bank account, business license, and factory gate are the same. Tattoo it on your arm if you're new to sourcing. Okay, before we go to question and answer, and we have the microphone that we'll pass around, here are some general resources. I'm at booth D33 for the rest of the show. Um, the information center at the top is where I write a blog for buyers that purchase under $100,000 a year. The advanced buyer blog is for buyers that purchase a million dollars and over. I write a topic once a month, so there's kind of high quality content there. The service center is a list of in service providers that have helped me. You know, I'm not in the QC business, I'm not a lawyer. If you need an introduction to those types of parties, I basically keep a list online at the service center. Supplier blacklist I told you about and uh, I did that shameless plug for the academy. So with that in mind, thank you for your patience. I still have about five minutes or more. It's the last conference of the day, so if you have questions, we can go over a little bit. Uh, thank you for your time. I look forward to your questions. Yeah, my, my rule of thumb is that you want the protect. I wish that the United Nations had some universal patent office so I could pay one person and get it registered all around the world. It doesn't exist. There might be some commonality in Europe or North America, but yeah, China and Australia are definitely on two different systems, even after this, the free trade agreements are put in place. Uh, it'll be better, but it's, it's not simple one button type thing. So what you have to do is ask yourself, I'm on a limited budget. Where do I get the most protection, the biggest bang for the buck? And generally, you want to protect yourself in two places, in the market where you'll be selling your product and in the location where you will be making it or where your competition may decide to knock you off. And so generally, that means China or India. So um, the good news is that for 600 Australian dollars or less, you can hire an English-speaking patent attorney in China who will take your logo and your brand name and register that as a JPEG image. Um, some, some registration agents, um, patent attorneys, especially in places like New York and Sydney, will try to make a little extra money by saying, oh, we have one application for the name, another application for it in Chinese, and another for the image. Oh, you want it in red as well as black? That's another filing fee. But in China, at least, um, if you put it all on one JPEG, then that's one application, and that'll save you a couple thousand bucks right there. So. Uh, 
if you've left your card, I'll be happy to introduce you to the to the IP attorneys that I've used and um, uh, registering a like a utility patent or an innovation. You know, that's more expensive, but uh, a brand name, yeah, really easy and straightforward. And you have protection the moment that you've registered. Unlike some countries where you have to, um, you know, it's first to market rather than first to register. Thanks for your questions. Hi, Mike. You spoke about um, getting a small order to try yeah. out a yeah. supplier. Yes. Um, I just had the thought have you ever thought of um, asking for a small percentage of that order before paying the final payment? So you, well, you can have um, batch shipments. You would give what's called a blanket purchase order. Supplier, my intent is to buy 10,000 units this year, but I would like them to come you know, uh, in batches of 2,000. I'm gonna give you a deposit against the blanket order and then pay the balance for each shipment. So you have a, a blanket purchase order and a purchase order, so you can spread that out. But if it's the first time that you're buying from a new supplier or maybe they haven't dealt in that material before, you want to dangle the carrot of a blanket purchase order, but first say, hey, we gotta get this test order order in place. And you know, it's a balancing act, it's a negotiation. Do they see you as a big buyer that that carrot has real value? Or are they worried that maybe you're not large enough to, 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 to be around in a year for two and then you need to negotiate on that first order? So you can sp spread things out. Um, a lot of buyers see that for cash flow reasons, you think, okay, this deposit, you know, that's money out of my pocket and it hurts cash flow. If you change your mentality a little bit from manu to a manufacturing perspective, you can let that deposit work for you. I'm getting a little bit off of the main question, but it's worth talking about. So um, say you're doing something customized. You have some fabric that the supplier hasn't dealt with before. And if you, if you are smart enough to negotiate, if you are successful enough to negotiate that you're gonna pay 100% at shipment, there's no incentive for the supplier to buy the raw material. And what they will do is they will wait until the price of the raw material goes down and then they buy the material and process, process it for you. What happened to me is in the past few years, raw material kept going up. So that supplier waited and waited and waited. And then a week before my shipment, Mike, you know, we didn't buy the raw materials yet and uh, we're gonna miss Christmas. Like what? My contract was six months ago. And so now what I do is, uh, not only have that penalty clause for missing, but I say, look, I'm gonna give you a deposit. Use my money to buy the raw material today. Send me a couple pictures. Let my staff come and visit the factory so that you have the material for my order. So you use your deposit, which you probably have to give anyways, to um, you know, prime the supply, supply pump, if you will, and make sure that your material is being processed for your order. So um, there's an element of how do we balance the exposure to loss of payment versus you know, getting things done on time. And everything is a negotiation. I did ask for a small um, sample of order, but mm -hmm. I didn't think of your 30, 40, 30 payment. Oh, yeah. I've actually agreed to full payment before shipping. If you've already agreed to that, um, you can still protect yourself by doing a third party inspection or you fly over to China or you can hire a proper inspection agency for I think $298 US is a all inclusive man mandate. For, it's like a commodity, like hiring a lawyer or a dentist. You can hire inspection agents, I, I can introduce you, that would just come on, on site before the product is packaged up and put in the box and shipped to say it's what you ordered, it's safe to release the goods. Sorry, I'm going to use that enough. Just a question that one of the things we'll be bringing in is um, yarn. Yes. Third party inspection can be challenged with that. Because yeah. like oftentimes we will find we don't know we have a problem until we've got to run it on our machine. Yep. And that does lead us in a bit of a bind if we've had to pay for everything before it actually leaves the country of origin. Yeah, I'll give you an example of a project we're doing where huge orders, millions of dollars of handbags per month. We negotiate a contract with the factory that I'm gonna give them X dollars per unit in labor. I'm gonna provide the material from my approved sub-supplier delivered to the manufacturer. So what happened is there was variance in that role of material. And the, the supplier is saying, no, it's the sub-supplier materials problem. And long story short, we needed a way to make sure that the raw material being delivered to the sub-supplier, or in your case, being shipped to you, 
was the right material. And there's variance in a, in a giant roll. So we borrowed the equipment from the factory, put the roll on there, and then unrolled it at random, checked it, rolled it back up. So it was a statistically reliable sampling. Okay. Mark, can I say three quick thank yous, if I may, on behalf of International Export, um, International Sourcing Export, 2015. Um, of course, thank you, Mark. <laughs> My pleasure. It's a huge part of our seminars program. Thank you. As we speak with our voice, it's just taking there. Um, thank you to you as the audience. Um, we've had terrific response to the seminar series and all the presentations. James West will be up on our web website, which is the new program. And uh, last of all, I'd like to thank our major sponsors, Alibaba.com.